What's up guys, West Coast Picks here, and today I got this ERA kite marked. I don't have a key for this lock, it was sent to me by Randy Perkins, uh, from a big box of awesome locks that he sent me. And uh, not long ago I picked another ERA, um, Euro Cylinder 6-pin as well, but um, this one is a kite mark so it's going to be a lot nicer and just at first glance what I could see is different is uh, we have anti-drill in the front of the Bible there pin one looks like a steel pin so that's probably anti-drill pin as well um, and the front of this plug looks like a two-piece for some reason it looks like it's detached from the inner portion so I don't know what's up with that we'll have to get it open to find out so um, I'm going to, if I haven't already posted the era, I don't think I have, but um, I'm going to post them side by side, like one video after the other, so you guys can actually see the difference between the two. Um, not too sure, other than what I just pointed out, is the difference, but I do know kite marks are a lot nicer, <laughs> a lot uh, harder to get into. And, made better and all that good stuff so uh, let's try to get into this one and then we can uh, take a look at what's in here a couple clicks out of the back there it was out of pin six and five Three sliding off the warding. If you hear uh, extra clicking there, Lost my false set out of three, and then I just got it back out of six. Not much of a false set. Might have to dig around for a uh, bit steeper of a hook here. Because this one might not be reaching the tops of some of these pins past the uh, front ones here. One felt like I set him, but he's all the way up at the top. So, is there any more like that in the back? I'm definitely going to need a deeper hook. Full setback. I 
And I keep losing my uh, false set. But I do keep getting it back out of six, so. Not a big deal. It's just uh, very tight tolerances in here. It's very easy to drop pins. That was quite the pick. <laughs> if you guys notice, uh, I don't know how long that took me. Probably four minutes or, or more. But, you know, a little bit of a fight back and forth. A lot of dropping pins. Not a lot of feedback. I felt a couple spools. And uh, that was about it. See if I can get this thing open without locking it. Hopefully. See what's up with this. This is my crude copy of that cool tool that was sent to me anonymously. And it works, but uh, it doesn't work as good as the one I was sent. And that's because uh, I didn't take any measurements or anything. I just pretty much looked at how it was made and tried copying it. And obviously my measurements are a little off, but it does work. Uh, there it is. Follow order. There we go. I don't think there's anything like T-pins or anything in here. So The back of this thing looks a little weird, though, so I'm going to shim it anyway. I got them all in there. Nice deep cut right in the back. That's probably what I was uh, dropping all the time. And this two-piece system, I don't know what's up with that. It's, it's definitely two-piece, but they are connected. So, weird. And it looks like a steel pin in one. We'll check it in a minute here. Looks like another one with a reduced diameter. And three. That's very weird. These look like dimple lock pins. And we have um, the counter milled to accept those strange pins. So that is weird. Yeah. All right. <laughs> First time I've seen that. Let's see what else we got in here. Looks like a steel in one. Those are our bump stop pins in two. Bump stop in three. Oh, with a wafer. That is strange. I'm assuming this is stock. Uh, I don't know otherwise, so with another wafer there. And four. Are these bump stop or are these acid type? I think they might be acid type and the bump stop is just uh, those counter milled key chambers. And these pins aren't gonna fall right down in there so that's everything uh, check a random chamber here to see if there's any counter milling or anything no it seems normal right, back in I just want to see if these are actually bump stop or what's going on here. That one drops right in. Let's try one of those enlarged chambers, like on three here. And no, it does not drop right in. So 
So these two enlarged on uh, three and four, I guess, are for bump stopping. I'm not sure why they'd have wafers on top of them, but they do. Um, and these other two are bump stop type pins, but uh, do not uh, work as a bump stop. So we have steel pins. Looks like they're all steel pins up top, guys. We have steel pin on one. Those bump stops are both steel pin. And uh, everything up top except for those wafers are steel. So a lot of anti-drill in here. Um, I'm guessing that that is also, yeah, that's also a steel plate. And that's why it's a secondary piece. They put it in after. That is, uh, doesn't come out. It's probably crimped in there. But that is a hardened steel cover. And that's why. And that's what was in this kite marked guys era so uh, a lot of crazy asa type bump stop pins they almost look like asa spools and um, there is the if you can see it I'll try to catch the light here uh, you can't really make it out but four uh, three and four are enlarged at the top and well, not even enlarged at the top, the normal size at the top, and then they're smaller at the bottom. You could tell by looking at the key pins here. So, uh, very cool, very cool lock. Um, was not easy to get into. Uh, if I picked it a few more times, I could probably get my time down to something decent, but, uh, you know, that was the first time picking it. And, uh, yeah, about four minutes, four and a half minutes, something like that. Anyway, guys, thanks, uh, Randy Perkins, for this lock. And uh, thanks everyone else for watching. Um, as always, I probably forgot to mention it, but you can uh, check out Randy's channel by clicking on his icon up in the corner there. And uh, everyone else, take it easy.